Hi guys, it's Angela with Andy Styles Boutique and welcome to our channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a repeat viewer, welcome back. If you're a subscriber, mwah, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for rocking with us. So this video is going to be a video on how to create unique Father's Day gifts using the Dollar Tree mug, uh, football image, and some lettering or some words. All right, so as you know, Father's Day is right around the corner and I'm always tardy to the party. You guys know that. But this right here can be used for Father's Day slash football celebrations if you do entertaining, so on and so forth. Or if you just want to gift this to um, someone who has, uh, you know, uh, one of these uh, football fanatics not fanatic but someone who really likes football and you know their team and you have access to the images you can create this um this is going to be a long video i'm going to give a warning now so if you don't like long videos it's probably not the video for you because this is a tutorial all right first things first let's close this first thing you want to do is double click to open up cricut design space and let that load it's going to bring you to a new canvas if you have the latest update if you don't it's going to update it first and then give you your canvas all right these three bars over here to your left you're going to click on that and select canvas voila you have a new canvas now um, you're going to go grab your image and i'm going to choose upload and i have already loaded my images into design space but for those of you that don't know how to do this part, you want to click on upload, upload image, browse, go out, find your image, grab it, and click open. It will then bring it into Cricut Design Space. Now, once you upload your image, you have to select the image type. How do you want Cricut to handle your image? How do you want Cricut to... Uh, display the colors and the contrast, so on and so forth. This, this is what the select image type is. I always choose complex because I want fine detail. I want to see my colors. I want everything to look crisp and beautiful. Then you want to click on continue. You go to the next page. I have Cricut Access, so I can go in and remove the background. If you don't have Cricut Access, you can go to remove.bg or use some other background remover. I think even Canva has a background remover tool. You can remove the background and then save it and then open it up in Cricut. All right, so I'm just going to click on the remove background. Um, option and there you go it took all of that junk <laughs> it's not junk it took all of that extra stuff that I don't need um, out of there so then I'm going to hit apply and continue and here is my image over here this one is a silhouette which can be used as a SVG so if I just wanted to use that and um, make do some sublimation or something like that then I would choose that one this one on your left but I want the one on the right I'm gonna print then cut so then you just hit upload oh before we go there you can name these images you can name them whatever you want you can put tags on them I don't do that I just get in there and get what I need and I'm just not that organized I guess all right, so then click upload and it uploads it up into your design space library all right so here are my here are my images so it cricket cleaned those up pretty good these down here that you see i did load these up into cricket design space and it this is how it cleaned it up so if this happens to your image let me show you how to go in there and take care of that so we're going to click this and hit um Let's, we only want one. So we're going to add that to canvas. And then we're going to go in and clean it up. The way you want to clean this up, I'm just going to resize it. You don't have to resize before you clean it up. I'm just going to because I want to make sure you guys are seeing this. All right. So what you want to do is you want to go in here to shapes, grab a shape. And then you want to open it up, unlock it and size it as best you can to cut out what you don't want so his his see his knee and the image is is meeting so i'm just gonna have to do it more than once so you want to hold down your shift key highlight your 
image, I'm sorry, you want to activate your shape, hold down your shift key, activate your image over to your right. You have an option to come in and slice, hit that option. It's going to blink, and then over on your right-hand side, you'll see where it's showing you that it has indeed sliced it. So then you want to just move these pieces and delete what you don't need. I'm going to try to come back in here. And see if it'll let me go in here and grab this. So there we go. We're going to highlight that. Hold down shift. Highlight our little guy, our football player. Hit slice. And voila. That takes that right there out. And we have one more slicing to do, which I'm going to try to turn it this way. And hold down my shift key. Activate it, slice over in your right hand, lower right hand corner, and we have cleaned up our image. So, there the image is clean. Um, there you go, we have our image now. This is important because when you start printing, you want to uh, make sure that your image is clean. So, when Cricut goes in to print or uh, to cut it, it cuts around the uh, pieces that you need and doesn't give you anything extra so then you want to go to make it and when you click on the make it button this is what Cricut does it creates a border around your image so that when you send it to cut it will go in and it will uh since there's a sensor in your machine turns that little light on and it'll go in and it'll go back and forth up and down to create to get the um the border, the boundaries, and to uh, uh, feed the image up into its computer, the little brain in the in the uh, Cricut machine. Um, so having said that, when you load that onto your mat, you have to make sure that your image is facing the same way on your mat as it's facing on your uh, computer. If not, Cricut will not cut it correctly. And I know that firsthand. I've already cut my images, so I won't be able to show you how that looks on the mat, but it you want to align it exactly like this is on your screen. You want it to match. All right, so then you go ahead and you want to hit continue. I've already printed, as I said, but I'm going to show you this step as well. You want to click send to printer, and then you want to um, choose your printer of choice. Turn off Add to Bleed and then turn on Use System Dialog because you want to control how your image prints. You do not want Cricut to control it. So then you send it to your printer. Make sure your paper is in there. It'll print it out and you're done with that step. All right, so now let's move on to the next step. We are now at our next step and um, the what I use to print my images out on is this Cricut printable vinyl. Um, I purchased it at Michael's, of course. I don't know if Joann's has it. They may, but I did get it at Michael's, and I'm not sure if Hobby Lobby had it or not, has it or not, but I got mine at Michael's. So I have printed out my design or my images. Now, one of my images did not, and it's this one. Cricut did not print it correctly. This one, it printed correctly. And the reason it didn't print correctly is because the paper had a little uh, little fold on it. So it didn't feed in right. That's why I was saying make sure that you have your, um, you have it aligned properly. So now what I'm going to do, the setting. When you print it out, the setting you're going to choose is printable vinyl. So you want to choose the right setting also because you want it to uh, cut enough to cut your image as fine as it needs to be. But you also want it, don't want it to be too hard to where it's going to rip your image. All right. So that's part. Now we're on part two. You're going to need some Mod Podge. You need your image and you'll need a paintbrush. Okay. So, and you're going to need something to protect your desk. I'm going to use 
this brown paper here, butcher paper. So you just want to go ahead and put your, let, lay your items out. And you just, I'm just going to um, coat it with Mod Podge. I'm going to coat it with Mod Podge because this is going to go on the outside of the beer mug. All right, and you just want to coat it. I'm not doing heavy. And you know what I should have done is peel it. So let me go ahead and peel it really quick before this mop pod hardens. See how, how easy this is for me to clean it, I mean to peel it? So you want to peel it off. Cricut went in and cut it. It cut it really nicely. But the other one, it did not do it that way. So I'll have to cut that by hand. All right, so this is my image. And I'm just going to go ahead and, like I said, I'm going to seal it with this Mod Podge. And I'm only sealing it with the Mod Podge because I'm going to try and do um, a coat of this resin. All right, so this is the first time I've done this, guys. So you are finding out with me how my method is going to work. The idea for the mug is in my head, but how it's going to work, we got, we're going to see together. All right, so I'm going to set this to the side. There, now, step three. Um, I chose a pattern here for this armor etching. So this is the second part, uh, third part. Sorry, step three is the etching uh, cream. Now, I've used this before. It's pretty easy to use, pretty simple but it stinks so ventilation 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 or if you prefer to wear a mask go ahead and, and, and don a mask all right so i am going to show you how to prep your stencil for the um etching so you want to go in and choose your your stencil of choice you want to make sure you're using removable vinyl um, I chose this gold because it's a color that I probably won't use on anything. So that's why I chose this one. But you want to make sure it's something that you can see. And you want removable vinyl because you want, you're going to take it off. It's just going to be a stencil. So anytime you're prepping your stencil to do the etching, you want to remove the part that you would normally um, keep. If you're doing, if you're, if you're weeding this to put it on this beer mug, then we will take all of this outside off. That's what we would take off and we would take these little pieces off, uh, you know, uh, just to get these words. But when you're etching, you don't do that. You leave um, this out of border and you take off the, the things that you would normally keep. Now, some people will save these letters. I'm not that. I'm not some people. <laughs> I throw these things away. But I, I am going to be a little gingerly. I do this a little gingerly because I want to make sure that the pieces I need, I'm going to have. But I don't really um, keep this part. All right. See what I'm doing? This is normally the part we would keep and put on our blank. But because we're we're doing we're making a stencil, we're going to get rid of this part. Now this is some old vinyl and I can tell it's old. See y'all, I don't I, I wasn't making it up. 
I won't say those. I've watched videos, especially when I first started um, crafting. I would watch videos and people would say, oh my gosh, keep those letters. You don't want to throw those away because, you know, you can save and, you know, you can be, you know, um, they were encouraging me to be thrifty. And, you know, I did do that. I did it, but I had so many little pieces laying around and so so much so many little ends and I'm like, you know what? This ain't my life. I can't. I I need to um have some type of order. So that's <laughs> the first part. And it just says beer, beer, beer. And um you just wanna take your time. No rush and clean up your image or click make your stencil um, as clean and crisp as possible because the armor etch it will grab whatever it, it will mark it it will mark it just just sure today is Thursday it will mark your glass blank whatever you're trying to etch on so you have to make sure it's good and clean. It probably won't hurt for you to go back over it and, you know, weed it. I mean, um, burnish it to make sure it's down properly. Y'all know I ain't doing that. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to say that. I might. I guess I should be a good example, right? But um, now, as far as the smell, it smells like eggs. If you've never used it, I'm preparing you now. There is a odor that you will encompass um, with using this. But this is permanent. This is permanent. I think there is a way uh, this can come off, but it, 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 you got to work at it. So if you do... Uh, a gift if you gift this to someone or you decide to put this in your shop as a um, craft option they're not gonna be able to destroy it it, it has it has the um, the energy to go to the end it's you're not gonna get rid of it I have some um, items that I have made and I was a little sloppy with it and there I couldn't gift them to anyone I couldn't do anything with them but they, they're still sitting over there and I thought about painting it so I may try to paint it to see if I can salvage it because it was just me being um careless I was I was new at crafting anyway and I was just ready to get in and make stuff and just do stuff with my whole heart with my soul and I did, but I learned. Um, when you're choosing your designs, I like fancy and pretty letters too, but those things are a little tough to weed and they're a little tough to uh, use as a stencil. So um, when you're picking these out, keep that in mind this is a um i purchased this off of etsy and it was in a it's in a set for you know everybody's doing the glasses now so it was a set for that and it had uh it was a bundle so i purchased the bundle and this one was in there and i figured it would be a good um slogan for Father's Day and then for football because football and beer pretty much synonymous now all right if you guys are one of those that recycle your letters I know you're probably cringing right now because I am not saving them they gotta go All right, we're almost there. One more beer left. And 
and this one. It acts as if it wants to act ugly. And I can't allow that. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. It did that. Okay. Okay, you go. You stay where you belong. Sometimes the removable ink does this, though. I mean, not the ink, the um, removable vinyl. It will, the ends will sever. Uh-oh, where'd that go? On my nail. Not where you belong. Okay. So sometimes I have to use everything I have to get it. To work the way it should okay so we're almost there we're almost ready for the next step so i did not show you guys me um putting this into cricut and um cutting it but like i said it was just a simple file that i purchased all right so this is done and I'm just going to run my fingers over it to remove any bubbles. Press it down. Make sure the pieces that need to be together are together. And the pieces that shouldn't be here are not here. All right. This is my stencil. This is, this is the stencil. Okay. All right. So this is our stencil. This is our football guy. So now I have, I'm going to do this next step. See this? This is my mask. It's around my neck because I'm going to need it for this step. I'm going to put it on. And the other thing that I have for this step is this Dashing Diva LED light. So I'm going to put my football guy here, my little Dash and Diva here. Let's turn it on. This plugs right into my computer. It's operated by a USB port. Oh, it's in there. All right, it's in there. So let's see why it's not on. All right, I turned it on. So there it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some um, resin on top of here. And I'm just going to spread it out. Not doing a lot. I just want enough to hold this, uh, for this to last. All right. Let's put some on here. And I want this to spread all the way over my little guy. Not doing thick at all. Trying to make sure I don't go outside the lines. So that when I get ready to pick it up. It's not adhered to my paper because this is all I have. <laughs> and like I said, this is me and y'all doing this at, at the, at, together. All right, so I'm going to put that under my little LED light. And let that sit. Okay. All right, so while that is working, I'm going to grab... Let me put some things away. Okay, it went off, but I'm gonna turn it back on again because I'm gonna I'm gonna do two dashes with that. For each section, I'm gonna do two cycles with the LED light. Hopefully it's curing. Not to the point to where I can't get it up though. All right, so this right here, I need to spray with alcohol. Oh, for this, don't leave it out in sunlight. So I normally keep this in my um, 
I have my stand, my, my work desk, and I keep it in there, and I just uh, protect it from the sun, so you want to make sure it's not there. Uh, you don't keep it in sunlight because it will harden, and it's thinking about what it's doing, I guess. All right, so that cured that part. Now I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to cure this. And while that is working, I was looking for my alcohol. It's, it's curing. I can smell it. Okay. Let's see. While that is doing that, I'm going to clean my brush. I use acetone to clean my brush. See, it's getting it out. See, it's got that little yellow orangey. That was the um, resin. All right, I'll dump that out. I don't leave stuff like that sitting around. Because we have a dog and she's two. And although she's two, she still acts as if she's two months. She picks everything up and puts it in her mouth, so. I don't want her getting a hold to any of this. All right, so we have one last piece. And I had to touch it to see how it was, was doing. Um, I, when I go to get my nails done, I talk to my nail tech about um, the LED, the LED using um, the resin and the LED light. And she was telling me that um, there's no right or wrong way. She just said that you want to make sure that you run it. Um, you want to run it to the point to where it's, if you have to run it more than two times or three times, she said, go ahead and do that. She said, there's nothing wrong with that because the strength of the LED lights, uh, they vary. They're not the same. They're not consistent. So, uh, because I was telling her that I was having problems with, um, the, um, I purchased one and I was telling her it wouldn't cure the way I needed it to. And that's when she was, you know, giving me that little lesson about LED uh, lights are, they're not all created equal, basically. So that helped me out. So I'm gonna go one more time with it and then we'll move to the next step. <clears throat> I am weeding this second stencil. You do want to do this in a well-ventilated area as well. Although I have a mask on, you still want a well-ventilated area. So while we're doing that, I'm going to create this other stencil. And remember, when you're doing your stencils, the part you would normally leave in is the part you take out. When I first did it, it made no sense to me. <laughs> But, I mean, it did, but it didn't. Because it's one of those things, once you get used to doing something a certain way, you have to mentally um, make sure that you're doing it. You're going against what you, the memory you have. Muscle memory in your hands. Muscle memory in your brain. You're going against that part. All right, so that should be this. Um, the other thing with this, it doesn't have a timer. 
Like, you know how you can set, some of them you can set for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. This one doesn't have that. I bought this at Sally's. It's just a very generic uh, LED lamp. But I bought it at Sally's and it is doing what I, it's doing what I need it to do. Um, I've used it on some other projects. But I am going to get another one. And I did not want to do the Amazon thing. Um, because we have a beauty supply store that, um, it's like a wholesale nail place in, in the city, a city that's about maybe an hour, 45 minutes to an hour from me. And because I, uh, have a cosmetology license, I can go in there. And I wanted to go in there and get a, a nice one. Something I can put my hands on. Something I can see. Because I know what I want. But I'm getting it. Okay. All right. So I think we're good there. Yeah. All right. Let me touch it. Right in the center, right here, needs a little more. And I don't know if it's sticky, sticky, or if it's just, um, looks that way to me. <laughs> All right, but we're going to move forward. I think that'll be the last time we have to cure that. And these are my little stencils. One says beers and cheers. The other one is just beers, beers, beers. So I have two um, mugs here that I um, prepped. Now prepping, that was uh, pretty simple. The mugs, like I said, Dollar Tree. I washed them with Dawn dish soap and I let them air dry. As once they were air dried, I brought them to my workspace. Very simple, just wash it and then air dry it. Very, very simple. All right, so I have my two stencils ready. My one guy is not, this one is not ready because like I said, Cricut did not cut him properly. So if you look right here, if I start to peel it, see, you just see the stitching where they tried to go in and cut it but it did not cut well until you get over to his hand then it sliced his hand so cricket yeah they did that so i'm gonna have to cut this one with scissors okay here's that all right let's see if my little guy is ready okay yeah i mean i can work with that What it did was make it thicker for me to handle. All right, so let's do this. Um, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna toss this piece, but I'm gonna grab more. grab some gloves so give me a second I have my gloves now your mug you can you can put your decals and your stencil on whatever side you want because you're going to be doing two, a dual side. So you don't really have to uh, try to figure out what side you want what on. I'm just going to put it on there. So the reason I said that, you probably are thinking, what is she talking about? 
So when you are making a drinking um, cup, mug, whatever, I tend to go with whether the person is right-handed or left-handed. If they're right-handed, the decal, the design and everything goes on their the side where they're holding it with their right hand. So it goes where they can see it. If they're left-handed, then I flip it around and it goes on the other side. Um, so right-handed will go here. If they're left-handed, it will go here. All right, so I have my handy dandy tape that I just simply, simply, absolutely adore. So first thing first, um, is I would and I would would recommend you do this part first as well is that you do the etching cream first I definitely recommend that because then you don't have to worry about scratching your um, image up or putting a, a puncture into the the resin okay so I'm just gonna go too deep here or too wide not deep too wide so I can pick up my stencil okay y'all hear my dog her and my grandson are tussling it's everyday occurrence so just check and make sure you have everything the way you want it put it on your transfer tape press it down Okay. Put on the transfer tape, press it down, lift it up. And there's your stencil. Do it carefully so you can make sure everything you need to be on your stencil is there. When you're doing um, these letters and stuff, you see my little dots want to come up and go with me, but they have to stay. All right, so this is the, the stencil. You just want to put it on your glass. Now these mugs, they have a line here and they have a line here, which is a good thing because you can use that as a centering point if you like. All right, so I'm going to place my words. I'm gonna do my taco method down and over okay down and over all right there's that i'm just going to peel this making sure what needs to stay stays what needs to go goes okay Sorry, you guys probably heard me sigh. <laughs> All right. There's a buckle there. Now, I did not get this on as best as possible, which bothers me. So. gonna try to move everything this uh, the older the um vinyl the more it buckles or it bubbles up all right so there's that this is my my thing this is the uh, my etch cream I bought this from Hobby Lobby a long time ago 
see how long it's been. <laughs> I don't even know if it's any good. Ugh. Okay. It's doing something. It's giving me something. All right, I'm going to put some gloves on. I haven't used this in a while. A long while. Go back through. Make sure things are down the way they should be. I could burnish it, but because I'm a little apprehensive because I have these little pieces that keep wanting to come away with me. <laughs> All right. I have my first, my template on. And I keep seeing these bubbles rising. So I guess that means I need to get to it. So I'm going to get to it. All right, let's get this. This is the Arma Etch Cream, as I stated earlier. I'm going to go in here and see. Oh, gosh, it stinks. So it smells horrible. So I'm going to go with the fact that it's still working. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to put some in here. You do not need a lot of this. Not at all. All right. So I'm going to use this teeny tiny little brush because I have the buckling here. And I'm just going to, you just go in and paint it. Um, because it is a stencil. But like I said, because I have the buckling, I don't want to put a lot on here. But you want to do a thorough coat of the etching cream. And like I said, I've had this for a minute. I don't know. I should have looked to see what their recommended lifespan for this was. As bad as it smells, it shouldn't, it should never die. Never ever. Okay. And like I said, I have a small, um, paintbrush. You just want to put enough on it to cover your letters. It works quick. If you um, do this, please use your safety precautions, meaning I have a mask on because I do not want the full smell of this. <laughs> I don't, but you just want to get in here and paint it. And it's probably already uh, etching where I painted. It's probably already doing that. It works quick. When you put your template on, you want to give some leeway or some room for, um, you want to have some material where to cover your the glass, the part of your glass that you don't want etched on because it will etch it. And I read, I was trying to, I messed something up. I know you guys are surprised, but I messed something up and I was trying to uh, fix it. Because um, of course I was on a deadline to try to get the person's order out. And I ended up going online trying to see how to remove it. And it was like, probably would have done better giving my firstborn kid to the company because it did not work, but it, it was painful. So I ended up going out buying a new glass and I was able to get get it out but I don't like working rushed and I was rushed 
So see, that's all you do is paint it on and just let it sit for the amount of time. I think it's 15 minutes. But if you see how long my stencil is, you know the top part will have cured well or etched or created what it was supposed to create well before my 15 minutes. But I still wait the 15 minutes. And I just paint it on. Make sure it's good and covered. Ooh, this stuff is, ooh, it's rich. All right, let me grab another pot. Or is that the same? Nope, that's not the same one I had. It's thickening enough. I don't remember it being this thick. I may have to oust it. I don't remember it being this thick, but it is thick. I thought it was a little more runnier when I when I used it before. Questions. Questions I have. No answers. All right, so while this is cooking, I'm going to, off camera, cut, that's too much. I'm going to cut the, uh, trim my other design. And I'm going to put the other stencil on. And we'll come back and finish these together where you can see the, the finished product. I hope that I have done a good job with this tutorial. And that you guys will feel pumped and excited to go get you some stinky armor etching cream and try it. I bought this when just to let you know how old this is. And if you guys know in the comments if if I'm I should even be using this if I should have tossed it a while ago, let me know. But I bought this back when Hobby Lobby was doing 40% off coupons. That's how long I've had this. <laughs> they were doing the 40% off coupons. That's how long I've had it. But we're using it tonight. I guess I could look and see what the expiration date on it was. Or is. And I am a mouth breather. I don't know if I ever told y'all that. So I'm breathing with my mouth open in this mask. And this stuff stinks. So there's a little suffrage going, suffering going on here. It's not that bad, but it does stink. My consolation is that I'm taking my time to get this right. So, and I have it, I have it well protected. So even if I was being sloppy, which I'm not, when you're crafting, you, you know, sloppy is not an option, I don't think. If you're sloppy, then that means you're learning some lessons. Okay. We're almost done. And this little uh, tumbler holder is worth every dime I paid for it, y'all. It allows me to do so much hands-free. It helps me line my um, decals up like they should be. And it's just... Uh, Take my money. <laughs> you can have it. This is worth its weight. All right. So I have one more. And you see where it's bubbled up 
as you can see, I'm just going in, uh, in and away, just getting in and out of there with that. Because it will seep under the, um, the tape. If you push a lot up, up under there, it will seep under there. And you'll have that line. You could probably be creative, though, and, and hide that. All right, we're on our last beer declaration here. And... get that covered and we're gonna see what happens here with the big reveal now you've seen me paint this but if you go back and look where I started up here you can see it's already etched it's already etched it made its mark but you still have to let it cure you have to let it do the um, the needful. You have to let it set. All right. It's my last B. And this is a piece where I miss. But see, it's already setting up there. So, all right, I'm going to go off camera. Let's toss this in the trash. I toss the uh, <laughs> paintbrush as well. All right, so I'll, when I come back, we're going to put together. We're going to assemble. I have let this sit, and I'm ready to remove it off. You can remove it and put it back into your container because this really does go forever in a day. It stretches long. So I was, but while I was away and I was waiting on the secure, I did go in and read the safety precautions and they do advise that you wear safety goggles. So I'm throwing those on. They advise you wear a mask, which I already had. Um, protective gloves, which I did have. I need another one. <laughs> um, protective gloves. And um, there was a warning that this could burn your skin. So uh, you have to use precautions. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to do this, make sure we are safe. Because I want you guys to hang around. Alright, so I'm going to start removing it. Like I said, you can take it back off and put it back into the bottle. Um... Although, I don't know how much it's going to go back in my bottle because it's, um, there was no expiration date. I did look. So, I guess what it's giving is what it's supposed to be giving. You can let this sit for 10 minutes and um, that is enough. I said 15. I think when I first started using it, it was 15 but then they came out with a new and improved formula, I believe I remember, if I remember correctly, um, where you didn't have to let it cure as long or sit as long. But yeah, I'm just scraping it off, putting it back in the bottle. The reason I'm scraping or you want to scrape it off is because you're going to take this to your sink and you're going to rinse it off. All right, that's one. I went ahead and I did this one as well. So um, I don't know how well this one will come out because I didn't do um, as much on this one in some spaces. But we're going to see how this is going to look. And you could probably see how it's doing. Um, you can see the white or whatever uh, where it's itched. All right, so I'm going to step away. I'm going to go and rinse this off, and I'll come back. Okay, so I cleaned my brush to clean my brush. I went in, I used some hot water, and then I used alcohol to spray it. And then I'll sit it upright and let it air out. And for our glasses, I'm going to grab a towel. 
going to pat it dry. Oops. Oh, no clinking, no clinking, guys. All right, just going to pat it dry. We're going to reveal to see what we ended up with. I'm a little nervous because of my bubbles, but... See it? I like it. Um, it's it's giving what it's supposed to give. Oh wow, this came out nice, guys. Proud of me. Us. <laughs> it was us. Because you guys hung in there with me. And I know you probably was sending some good vibes and everything, so much appreciated. But yeah, this is it. And it came out much better than it did when I did it the first, you know, before, like when I first started messing around with Arma Etch, Etching Cream. So this would be a good thing to do if you were wanting to monogram, monogram something. Let's say you had a bridal, um, bridal party uh, that you were responsible for making gifts for. You could just go in. Uh, there's a little oopsie. It buckled, and see that was what I was afraid of. Is where it buckled. I have a little a spillage, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, like I said, I could have burnished it, but um, I could come through and do a fine line here with uh, some vinyl to separate that, to cover that up if I wanted to. And it's right there where it's, uh, you can hear it, it's not coming off. Um, I could. I seriously will. <laughs> so I'll probably just take some vinyl and do some lines to separate beer, beer, beer. And I may, even put in some exclamation points. Or I don't know. I'm just talking, y'all. But you could fix that part. Uh, you can burnish it really, really well. Or you could leave it and let that live its life. Or you can fix it. All right. So that's that. That's that one. Where's, oh, here's the other one. Let's see what happened with this beer, beers and cheers. Let's see how that one came out. Okay, this this um this is a removable vinyl, but man, it's it's acting like it wants to stay forever and ever and ever. <laughs> All right, so this looks okay. This one looks better. Note to self, don't use the old removable vinyl. Use a squeegee to burnish it. I don't know, guys. What do you think? You think it looks okay? But anyway, this is how you will do the etching for the beer mugs, which, like I said, this doesn't come off. It's not going anywhere. And um, let me get this off so we can put our little football guy on it. I did not cut the other one out. I didn't. And I hate this. I hate when the um, <laughs> the vinyl gets to your fingers, which is funny because I hate stuff on my fingers. But here I am living that crafting life. But 
get that off. It, I'm sorry. That's one of my uh, things. All right, so here's our football guy. And look at it. It's flexible. Let's see how he's going to come off. Okay. He looks good. He feel It feels good. So I don't have to worry about this being um, getting uh, washed away or, you know, not looking nice or wearing off over time because I put the, um, no, you don't, I put the resin over it. Let's get him on here. Oh, he looks good, y'all. Oh my gosh, I am in love with him. Look at that. <laughs> OMG. So there you go. Dollar store beer mug. And um, I don't know if you guys can really see the etching here, but it's on there. Um, yeah. All right. So hopefully you guys will jump in here and you'll try this out. And you will get in there and turn those Dollar Tree beer mugs into something amazing.